6334, education or miseducation. Kando was always a strong student. She was a child of hardworking parents who taught her the dignity of hard work. She was almost a straight A student throughout primary and secondary education, even university. You know, Kando finished her youth service and was expected by most of her classmates to end up in a Fortune 500 company. You know, Kando can get a job. She has applied for years. She has attended many interviews. You know, still, nothing. Kando's story is the story of millions of Nigerian youths today who have gone through 6334 plus one system of education. I mean, if you count, now you're, you know, sorry, uh, the NYSC in Nigeria. And after giving those long or just 21 years of your life to getting a good education, then what? In many cases, years and years of, you know, waiting for gainful employment, which begs the question, what is the point of giving all those years? I mean, if we're going to end up still being dependent on our parents, you know, our guardians. Many employers argue that it's not a question of unemployment, but unemployability, which means there are lots of graduates, but they're not just employable. Perhaps they have a point. A look at the dailies or job advertisement platforms reveal there are hundreds, and in some cases, thousands and hundreds of thousands of vacancies across various industries in Nigeria. Every day you get those emails, you get, you know, those job vacancies. So why aren't these, you know, unemployed people, why aren't they scooping up all these, you know, vacancies, considering there are millions of people that are unemployed? Do you know that most people are already, do you know that most people that are already employed actually stand a better chance at getting another job than those who have never had a job before? So where does that leave those inexperienced graduates who are, you know, tossed out of an interview many times because they lack experience, they don't have job experience. Where does that leave the remaining millions of undergraduates who will soon be joining the labor force? So I mean, let's look at some numbers from you know, 2019 and 2020 to start with. There are about 308 degree awarding institutions in Nigeria, there's 134 polytechnics and 174 universities. They have an enrollment population of about 2 million and they produce about 600,000 graduates yearly. <laughs> Let that sink in. 600,000 graduates every 365 days. How many Nigerian youths are unemployed? 13.9 million. That is 34.9% of Nigerian youths aged 15 to 34. Those are the unemployed ones. How many Nigerian graduates are unemployed? Almost 3 million of Nigerians unemployed, hold graduates and postgraduate degrees from tertiary institutions. So they've gone through polytechnics, they've gone through universities, and about three million of them are still unemployed. Between 2008 and now, there has been a steady year-on-year -year increase in unemployment. We urgently need to start rethinking education as we know it, because how many more candles can we possibly handle over the next 10 years? Not so many, I must tell you. Not so many. And the, the, the issue is not so much about the education system. The issue is so much about the fact that you are educating them, but there's no job for them to come and do. Now, the, the, the problem is in two phases. One, there is no job for them to do. Two, they themselves cannot even apply themselves to create a job or to actually stay on the job. What do I mean? First of all, something as simple as ketchup, we are importing it. Remember that that ketchup we are importing. Somebody in another country is farming the tomato. Another person in that country is bagging the tomato, grinding it, bagging it, packaging it. Another person is loading it onto the truck. Another person is driving that truck to the airport, putting it in the container, not carrying that container, puts it on the ship. That ship will now, and that person will, will maneuver the ship, drop it in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Then what we, what are we going to do? Very okay. simple. We'll carry the tomato, put it on the shelf, and now... Come and buy our tomato. All the stages behind that humans should have operated and contributed and would have been employed to create capital and labor. We don't have those. That's why we don't have the job sitting down for the candles to come and take. Point number two. Kando has finished university and an entrepreneur like me, I now start my very small business, which of course, this is a real life story. 
I start my very small business and my books. And I tell my staff, there's a customer in Calabar that wants our books to be dispatched to her. Go and find out how much it will cost for me to dispatch the, book, the books to Calabar and, and the procedure. Then the, the staff goes and comes back and tells me, Madam, to dispatch it to Calabar is 3-5. And I'll tell the um, customer, customer, we'll send it to Calabar at 3-5, it takes two days. Then she asks, what is the name of the cargo company? Then I ask my staff that I gave transport money to go and investigate. And the person says, ah, ma, I, I, I didn't check the name of the logistics company. <laughs> Let it out. Let what? out the laugh. <laughs> it's what you're saying is, is, is interesting that this conversation is coming up quite coincidentally because... Like we're going to, one thing I have come to understand and see is that we have a problem that is beyond just the educational system. And like you rightly said, HMI, it's not about the fact that the educational system has a problem. It's actually about what is the educational system actually imputed. So we have a situation where mayhaps what has been imputed into people is an obsolete system of, of, of education. Maybe, for instance, the situation in the entire in the entire world and in, in reality has totally changed. I remember when I was in secondary school, I read a book called The Mayor of Castor Bridge. And I was quite fascinated with that book because at that time, my dad was an entrepreneur and, well, he remained an entrepreneur. And I went home and I said to him that, Daddy, I presume that you are going to be out of business very soon. He almost slapped me. Like, this guy is mad. <laughs> like, how do you come home? I was an SS1. And I, you know, and I said to him that, from what I read in this book here, they are talking about different revolutions we had that from the at that time the mayor was pretty much doing things in a manual me method and i can see that automation is taking over from this book and i see you here you go to your office in the morning now you're a lawyer you went into maritime and many other things thereafter maritime real estate but your system of operation is still pretty much very just you it's you and your team members. You have a fax machine that is not even functional. So people are going to have to call you and talk to you. I said, Daddy, what I saw here is that you are going to need to improve on something. I had no idea what I was talking about fully at that time. So I'm thinking here that we have taken on a system of education that has taken an old methodology. Mm. We are using, we are teaching people outdated, obsolete things. And the reality is that research has shown now, and I'm sure that you in academia can testify to that, that in the near, in the new years to come, we are going to have people and the, jo and the roles that they have right now, currently speaking, they will not have jobs for them. True, so even yeah, those in employment, yeah. for instance now, I mean, by training, okay, yes, so I'm a lawyer, I've been in journalism, but I realize that a lot of the things I have done are totally not good going to take me through this year and into the next year. I am going to have to embrace a lot of new thinking. So I think what we may be advocating for is that the educational system needs to begin to infuse new blood. Needs to begin to look at what it's exactly are we yeah. t teaching. Yeah. The teachers themselves also need to reskill and upskill. So it might be a situation that Kando may actually need to take on what are the skills of the future. What and are the technical things that Disruptive need to be done? technology. Uh, absolutely, Thank I agree you. with you, which, which is why I say the system is the problem. The system is the problem because you cannot rise beyond the system that you've gone through for 20 years. And I'll tell you why. Mm. Let me tell you why. Most, most classrooms today, they teach for exams. They don't teach for life. Well, but the, the job question. of the class of the yeah. of your the jo your job, yeah. to, I think Cici wants to join so, in. I remember when so I finished you know, university. You know when I was an in, adult, for ten when I was in, old, no, when I was in, six year old, it's not quite the same. HMI and Tolu, do we allow Cici join us? But true, right. when I was in year three, and I remember I told myself that. I have to go to a computer school. So I took my pocket money. I remember vividly. 5,000 naira. I saved it up. So, and I took that money. And I went to a computer so school. So three. That's one year. Cici, please join us. Yes. Imagine Tolu, that I, 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 that. So, Cici, please, please join us. Cici, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, you, you guys are just infuriating me because this is what I've been advocating for for the past, I don't know, six, eight years. Uh, and this, what you guys are saying, it scaffold, it scaffold my notion of, of inclusive education. My call as an activist, I am calling for a revolution in the education system. And then I'm saying that education, it needs to be tailor-made.
so. you know, education, it needs to be tailor-made because I'm feeling that the kind of education that we are giving now, it is not preparing for, it is not preparing our children, you know, for the present uh, uh, dispensation, you know, looking at the fourth industrial revolution. What kind of skills and knowledge are we giving them? You know, for, for, for example, it is very important that everyone, I feel that, you know, as part of my call or as part of my advocacy, point, I feel that, um, you know, uh, things like entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, it should be, you know, entrepreneurship and financial literacy, they should be the fundamentals or the cause that every student, irrespective of the field that they go into, because right now, we are no longer, uh, you know, we shouldn't be producing employees, children should not go to university with a mindset that, you know what, when I qualify, I need to go get a job, we want them to say that I need to create something, I've realized that there is a gap, and this is the we need to produce, you know, a, a graduate that are problem solvers. That is why when you look at the 21st century skills, we need, problem solving is one of the skills that we need to yeah, uh, inculcate. We, we need to teach our school. kids that yeah. when they finish, they no, 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 I want to become a doctor because of one, two, three. Not that I want to become a doctor so that I can have money. Because okay. now we find, even in South Africa, the same thing. We've got like tons okay. and tons of graduates. Thank you, you know, <laughs> thank you and, Susie. You know, um, people getting. Susie, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Susie. Just sitting at home, waiting for a job with the skills and knowledge. We need the education system that will actually propel. Oh, yes, certainly. To a, a, in compelling them, we will get the entrepreneurs. Like Cindy said, the entrepreneurs are going to take the forefront, disruptive technology and the ability to get the children to have the skills they need to survive in the 21st century. Absolutely, I agree. I think that, yes, certainly from a young age, we will start to include you know, entrepreneurship skills and you know, financial skills, decision-making skills, problem-solving skills from a you know, young age. Thank you very much, everyone. That was, you know, an excellent conversation. Now, who is responsible for the skills for the future Nigerian? Is it us or the government? Anything enlightens us, you know, after the break.